So next we look at the digital forensic process. Okay, so earlier we talked about what is the overview of digital forensic, we talked about what is digital evidence and then uh, the forensic and now we talk about the actual process. So principle of digital forensic. These are the principles. Um, so first of all, we talk about the uh, time, the timeliness. So we should actually collect evidence as soon as possible to ensure that it is not damaged. Okay, this is very true. And also, be, okay, the damage here could means that uh, before the, uh, the the digital evidence has been tampered or being uh, deleted by somebody. Okay. Um, again, also the continuity explain changes in the evidence form when it is initially collected to when it's officially presented. Okay, so this we have to explain. Uh, so maybe sometimes when we we did a process, and like I said, sometimes uh, some of the tools might actually alter uh, some of the uh, uh, the attributes of the the digital evidence. Okay, in order to to process the information, so it might damage the um, some of the original source. Um, comprehensiveness: search all the files in the target system comprehensively, analyze them, and provide necessary expert testimony. Okay, and okay, this is very important. And so, legitimacy: the entire examination and forensic process must be supervised okay so uh, the person that collects the uh, evidence uh, the whole entire process it has to be supervised uh, in order to 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 be verifiable so that uh, the person that collects the evidence uh, might not be the person which is collaborate with the attacker um, so during the forensic examination protect the target computer system or to avoid any changes, this is very important. Data damages or maybe the virus infection. Okay, it's just like when you collect a physical evidence, we want to preserve it as as it is, you know, um, as original as it is, and we do not want something to change the uh, the computer system. Digital forensic process. Now, according to the characteristics of digital evidence, it is essential to collect evidence as soon as possible during the digital forensic to ensure that it has not been damaged. Now, just like what we saw in the movie, an example like the CSI, the crime scene investigation, and usually there's a, the crime happens, the CSI team will be the first to go into the scene and um, you know they will lock down the whole area and uh, nothing can be touched and they will start doing some collection of the evidence. Now it's quite similar in, in this sense here. Uh, so first of all we need to know how to protect the scene as in dig digital scene. Uh, then after that we have to know how to obtain the evidence, the digital uh, evidence. So once we obtain how do we preserve? Okay, So we want to make sure that the evidence cannot be tampered, cannot be modified, cannot be altered. And after that, how do we verify the evidence? Then we need to analyze uh, based on the evidence. And so from evidence, we can start to do some tracing. For example, like we can trace where the source is coming from, uh, from which computer or maybe from which IP address. And finally, we need to know how to present the evidence uh, to the court. So first of all is protecting the scene. So before digital forensic is performed, we have to freeze the target computer system so that the criminal suspect cannot damage the evidence. Okay. So sometimes it is good to ask the person to remove uh, to 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 get out from the you know to step up uh, from the seat so that the person might might not be able to delete or format the entire machine. And to avoid any changes to system setting, damage, hardware, okay, data or virus infection, okay. Um, avoid changes in evidence, definitely. However, if changes occurred from when the evidence is initially collected to when it's officially presented, they must be explained, okay. So, for example, 
uh, from the moment we collect something and uh, and during the process okay so we have to perform some uh, some diagnostic tools and that diagnostic tool might actually alter the uh, original content so this this ex this whole process has to be explained so in addition the whole process of the digital forensic must be supervised so you must have a third party to to be the witness that says that this evidence has not been uh, tampered and it's actually went through a proper process of uh, collecting the information so after that obtain the evidence search all the files in the target system including existing normal files okay normal files are easy yeah we can just use a browser and we can browse the files deleted files that are still exist on on the on the disk so typically when we delete a file bits and the bytes are still actually stores on the uh, the uh, maybe the hard disk or the ssd or maybe the the micro sd card so and uh, for example files are not overwritten by uh, any new files and sometimes could be some hidden files okay and also some of the files are password protected and also the uh, encrypted files as well so the forensic tools that we typically use are hardware tools and also the software tools so this is an example of the hardware forensic tools so here we have two examples uh, one is called the hard disk duplicator and you can see there uh, this is actually like a, a case where you can put in a hard drive and you can put in another piece of hard disk, a blank hard disk and then you can actually start to do the uh, duplicating okay and there's another type of the uh, uh, we call it the uh, hard disk read-only locker um, so so first of all let's talk about the uh, hard disk duplicator so the, the function of these tools is to mirror the content of the hard disk to ensure that the data of the original hard disk is not modified and this must be ensured because the right operation is not permitted on the original hard disk during forensic okay and next one is called the hard disk read only locks so it blocks the right channel of a hard disk to ensure that the data in a storage medium is not modified so during the data obtaining and analysis therefore ensuring the data integrity okay so this is actually like i said very important we do not want the disk to be uh, modified uh, one of the like i said one of the very important thing is the attribute of a file there's something called the access time what is the last access time to enter the file okay so if let's say uh, the, the hacker access one of the files yesterday and let's say today we try to read the file and to see what is what are the files what's the content of the file so we actually if we access today the last extra time might change according to today's time instead of yesterday's time so with the hard disk read only locker it actually locks down the entire hard disk and uh, not even the uh, the attributes of this can be changed okay hardware forensic tools these are the tools to help to collect uh, evidence so first we look at all-in-one forensic appliance this is a forensic device that clones reads and also to disrupt evidence okay this is the this is how it look like and we also have something called the forensic tower okay, this is how it look like forensic tower it provides functions such as mobile phones forensic analysis mobile phones mirroring mobile phones chip mirroring and also media forensic so this is where you put your smartphones to be uh, mirrored and we also have something called the media repair device so this is to repair electronic data storage media such as electronic hard disk in other words example like SSD uh, hard disk and uh, we also can do the repair for mechanical hard disk this is our typical rotational hard disk uh, so here we can do mirroring of the files without uh, tempering the, the file access date and time we also can repair USB drives and also TF cards now in China it's called TF cards and the rest of the world we call this uh, SD card 
Okay, so those are the hardware. So how about software? So in software, for ease of research, developers have created a wide variety of the computer forensic tools as below. So okay, um, so we have something called the image check tools, uh, Tom Plus. Okay, you can um, anti deletion tools. Okay, so here we have Hitman uneraser. Okay, so there are tools that you can. Uh, try to perform the unerase of uh, those uh, file now remember files that are erased uh, they, they normally will left the, the digital footprint uh, on the on the blocks on the hard disk blocks so with the uneraser they are able to recover block by block and try to identify all these blocks are actually a, a word file a jpeg or etc etc and we also have the cd-rom tools this is for the uh, cd-rom diagnostics text search tools this is to search for any text within the whole entire hard drive just to search for a keyword driver image program save back snap back ghost and dd so this is what we call the uh, uh, this cloning software and also we have the this erasing tools this scrub for example just to erase uh, hard disk the, the proper way so example of the foreign uh, forensic tools Okay, so this is one of the example. It's called the N case. Now, N case is a forensic application completely integrated with the Windows UI. Okay, the graphic interface, and it provides functions such as data browsing, search, disk browsing, and data preview, case creation, evidence file creation, and also case saving. Okay, so this is a, a complete. And uh, so most of the uh, forensic today nowadays they actually pretty much depend on this this software it's called the N case so these are some of the uh, other digital forensic related technologies so here we have the uh, network packet uh, analysis analysis and the forensic okay so I think uh, some of the tools we did mention in the previous chapter for example like the Wireshark uh, lock uh, forensic okay we can also use a lock uh, analyzer the Honeypot forensic um, covert code forensic data mining and also some of the uh, the future kind of uh, technologies such as the chip forensic cloud forensic IOT forensic and there's a side channel attack forensic okay so these are actually some of the emerging technologies which will is, is actually some of the uh, future trend of the forensic technology okay using the cloud to do the uh, the, the process so these are some examples uh, the packet analysis and forensic so for in the Linux environment TCP dump is uh, is one of the tools to collect the uh, network uh, packet and also can perform filtering you can mention we'll only collect whatever packet which is interested and also we have the Wireshark uh, that Wireshark is quite similar to TCP dump uh, we also have the slot uh, kit this is for the uh, collection filtering stream reassemble and also the data association okay so we can let you associate the uh, which uh, data packet uh, within the network uh, and so we can reassemble all the stream of a packet and we have the, the Argus okay the Argus is also for collection filtering and log analysis we also have a sniffer kind of software this is to sniff the, the network packets and also for the packet analysis okay. so this example of the chip uh, forensic okay so this is uh, we call it the uh, joint test action group analysis uh, access the internal register of the analysis processor through the test access port TAP inside the chip this is a chip okay um, forensic can, implement, can be implemented even though the phone is damaged okay um, so th this example even though the phone is damaged we can, they can actually go in through the chip here and to try to recover some information uh, so the red box in the figure shows this is the phone chips you can use the analysis to analysis tools to collect the evidence from the damaged uh, phone chip okay so this is actually to try to gain access to all this information and we also have something called the dynamic simulation 
Dynamic simulation is used to simulate the mobile phones in order to restore the chat history and also the group the discussion information to try to extract the files from the chat software right so for example in this case uh, this is the example of a uh, software uh, apps called uh, WeChat okay uh, WeChat is something like uh, the uh, WhatsApp in the Western world WeChat is the one in the used primarily in China and so and we can uh, analyze the number of uh, reposts how many posts that the the person that has been uh, sent up uh, what is the impact scope source of information and and many more so as shown as the figure below this simulator is used to simulate the operation environment of the mobile phones and display the digital rate env envelopes records now digital rate envelopes uh, in China this is called and this is actually uh, it's like a, a, a transaction of a, a money okay so if you send somebody with the red envelopes uh, you are actually sending with uh, X amount of money and all these transaction records can be can be traced back okay or how much money you receive from uh, maybe from corruption or whatever it means so next is how do we preserve the evidence now, preserve, pr uh, preservation of the evidence directly affects the legal uh, effects of the evidence, which is very true. Only preservation technologies that conform to legal regulations can guarantee the authenticity, authenticity and reliability of the evidence. So evidence preservation technologies includes uh, encryption of the information, digital envelope, digital signature, digital certificate and also the timestamp okay, to preserve the evidence which is collected during that time okay. so here are the uh, preservation technologies so to avoid the changes in the system settings hardware damages, uh, data damages and virus infection during the forensic to preserve the evidence in the initial state so we can actually use some of the technology that we we pretty much study be in the previous uh, chapter, the encryption, decryption, the digital certificate. Okay, so we can use all these to actually uh, to encrypt the information uh, as as evidence. Okay, now what's most important thing is actually the timestamp uh, is to prove when was the uh, data uh, being uh, being recorded as the evidence. Okay. So verifying the evidence, okay. So verify the integrity of the evidence and determine whether it complies with the applicable standards, okay. So normally we will talk about the relevance of the that digital in, uh, evidence with the case, uh, and also the validity and also the objectivity, okay. So what is the reason why we need to preserve this piece of information? What has this have relevant to do with the uh, uh, the the victims or maybe the uh, attackers and also the validity of the of the evidence okay so this is actually the the three uh, criteria uh, to to verify okay so principle of the digital ev uh, evidence verification so electronic data verification is a special scientific and technical activities and has its own specific uh, principles so here we have the legitimacy, um, independence, and supervision. So what's the legitimacy? This is the judicial verification of electronic data should be standardized and institutionalized in terms of business scope, verification procedure, and also technical standards. So first of all, in terms of uh, how do we verify the standardization, it has to be published. Okay by the uh, government uh, body uh, of the legitimacy and next is the supervision now supervision is the ju judicial verification of electronic data should be supervised by the investigator or by the public okay so it has to be opened and to to prove that the evidence is actually uh, is actually transparent throughout the whole process of collecting and independence the judicial verifier 
of the electronic data independently express verification opinion without external interference. Judicial verif the verifier, it could be a third party uh, company and uh, it, it should actually express uh, what is the content of the uh, evidence without being feared by the um, uh, by the uh, the attacker or maybe uh, some of the big companies that tempered the uh, uh, that was uh, involved in the in the court case. Okay, and after that, analyzing the evidence. Okay, evidence analysis. Search for or match the keyword or key phrase in the obtained data flow or information flow to analyze the relevance of the events. So evidence analysis technology includes password crack cracking and data decryption, file attributes analysis, digital digest analysis, log analysis, and also the reverse engineering. Okay, so there are times where some of the evidence, the file, are being um, being uh, encrypted, or maybe it has been um, encoded with a password. Right? For example, a zip file. We can actually uh, somebody could probably could uh, might have uh, zip all the important documents uh, with a password. So we sometimes we need the password cracking tools to analyze, uh, to de de decipher, okay, or maybe to crack down. Uh, the protected files, okay. Uh, file attributes uh, analysis, okay. So same thing like I mentioned. So every file, every uh, every files they have the the uh, metadata information, and all this information can has to be uh, analyzed, digital digest, log anal analysis, or sometimes you could even need to perform reverse engineering uh, to redo the entire process, okay. Right. Next step is tracing. With the upgrade of cybercrime technologies, forensics has been combined with network security tools such as intrusion detection to implement dynamic forensic. So the purpose of the tracing is to find where the attack source. Okay. So um, so how can we trace back the uh, the origin? Okay. So um, such up technologies we have. Uh, log analysis. Okay, so from uh, what kind of logs? Now, in the previous chapter, we did mention about the operating system logs. We also mentioned from the firewall logs. Uh, this is one of the best uh, indicator to figure out the source IP address that launches the attack. And also, sometimes in the application software logs, they do contain the uh, uh, the information about the the source. Okay, we can also use uh, trapping uh, mechanism. Okay, sometimes this is called as a honeypot. Now, honeypot is actually a is a, is a kind of um, environment that we uh, that the uh, organization purposely planted in, so that uh, is to trap the um, uh, the attacker from falling into the trap. So from there, we can actually understand. Uh, the method, the mechanism, how they actually enter into our system, what kind of uh, method they're using. So from there, we can learn how to prevent. And also from there, we can trace the, where the source comes from. Uh, and also uh, tracing, capturing suspect using the uh, related devices, okay, such as the uh, firewall, uh, routers, and uh, maybe switches, etc., etc. Right, so this is the uh, forensic uh, tracing uh, technologies. So hacker usually use data encryption um, to protect uh, the information that they are sending. Uh, let's say they sometimes send out uh, the information back to their own uh, server. Uh, they also like to do log clearing to clean up all the logs information because they know that uh, we will be using the logs to track them. They also like to use sniffer and also a stepping stone or maybe a bastion hose. Uh, we call it a jumping ho uh, hose, uh, jumping machine, where this is the first uh, point of uh, contact. From there, they actually can enter to the uh, uh, company resource. For example, they probably could enter the uh, some of the employees' uh, 
the uh, machine, maybe the laptop, which is in the public area, they manage to gain access to the uh, uh, to the machine, the laptops, and from the laptop they then uh, VPN back to the the company. So this is where uh, we call it the uh, bastion uh, host. They also can uh, uh, they are very well known to hide or maybe to clear the intrusion traces. So to clean up all the uh, the transaction or the logs. So therefore, it is necessary to implement forensic tracing on intrusion information. So common techniques are like uh, ping, netstat, trace route, or maybe the NS lookup commands uh, to actually tr try to perform to look back the um, to trace back the uh, the origin. So for example, uh, from the ping command, uh, we can actually tr ping from the routers or maybe from the firewall to the uh, uh, to the uh, source IP address, which is the uh, hacker's uh, machine, we can also perform NS lookup and to try to figure out this IP address uh, actually coming from which country, and we can also do a trace route to see how many hops is actually uh, so from the from our own router to the uh, to the hacker's uh, machine, how many hop counts are they involved? Uh, are they from the same local region or is, are they from overseas etc etc and also uh, packet analysis so we can actually analyze uh, the packet that they are sending to us um, and also log analysis which we already discussed in the previous um, we can perform a link test to look at the, the milliseconds to see are they close to us or are they far from us um, and also the uh, the packets are records, okay, or what time they enter, uh, they attempt the first, uh, what is the time that they actually uh, send the first attempt, and and how long have have they been trying, uh, in order to get successful penetration, and also the packet tag uh, tracing, and also spam, okay. So we can also use the spam to trace the. Um, Spam mail is basically the uh, junk mail, uh, so from there we can also roughly uh, to do some uh, tracing. So presenting evidence, now, this is actually the final stage where we need to preserve all the uh, evidence and then uh, to submit to the uh, judicial um, authority. So this is to, to mark the extraction time, so when do we extract the information this has to be recorded, the place of extraction, what kind of device uh, were extracted, and what extractor we use. Uh, did we use uh, like a hard disk cloning method, or did we use a, a kind of software to pull out the uh, information, and also the witness to the evidence, so who actually observed during the process, just to ensure that all the information that we extracted, uh, we as a investigator, we did not uh, mo modify the contents so, and also submit the evidence to the judiciary authority in a visible forms and also to pro provide a complete supervision chain so this is very important right so let's talk about quiz which of the following is not a characteristic of digital evidence so we have a diverse b high tech c shapeless and d not easy to be damaged. Now the answer here is D, not easy to be damaged. Right, second question. Which of the following is not a principle of digital evidence verification? So we have A, legitimacy, B, independence, C, reliability, and D, supervision. Now the answer here will be reliability. Right, so in summary, uh, we spoke about the overview of the digital forensic, we spoke about cyber crimes, and also we talked about the, the overview of how the digital forensic, uh, and also we mentioned the digital forensic processes. Thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next chapter.